Hello everybody, Interinteri back again with another video. And guys, I just did a preview about the final between Rafa Nadal and Daniel Medvedev. And I'm going to do a preview about what's coming up next, which is the Cincinnati next week. Tomorrow, on Monday, that starts. Uh, the seventh Masters Thousands uh, tournament that we have this year we have like we all know nine masters thousand tournaments if i'm not mistaken so the seven masters thousand tournament will be will we get ahead and will start next week on monday my friends and i will do why not the top five favorites let's do a top five favorites my friends because now we have two more two big players who are, who are doing their first tournament since wimbledon two huge players one of the greatest tennis players of all time and we all know who's, who, 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 who those two players I'm talking about is. It is, of course, uh, Roger Federer and uh, Novak Djokovic. So, let's do a top five favorite. Why not? On my, on my number five list, my friends, I will have Dominic Thiem. I don't have him higher than this, my friends. I am not super impressed from Dominic Thiem when it comes to hard court, fast uh, tournaments. Cincinnati is pretty fast. I am not. I don't like Dominic Team chances on hot, on fast surfaces. We all know that Dominic Team struggles in fast surfaces like grass. And Cincinnati is pretty fast. Cincinnati, Shanghai, and Australian Open. I believe it's the three fastest tournaments that we have in tennis. So uh, I even this even this one to have Dominic Team as high as number five is it. I'm taking. A, I'm taking a risk here, but guys, let's be honest, guys. We don't have the OTP tour is not in a it, it is not in the greatest condition, guys. It is not easy to predict winners, especially not outside Grand Slams. It is not easy, guys. I don't know if you guys remember when I did my preview about Montreal last week. I said that. I feel it for me it is easier to predict Grand Slams than it is is it than it is to predict Masters because we don't have many players who delivers guys we don't have and the players who delivers and who was consistent it is like usual like it is like it has been the last 10 to 15 years Djokovic Nadal and Federer all the others they play one good week here and then one then one good week there. We saw Dominic Thiem and Kyrgios last week. Both won a tournament. Kyrgios won in in Washington and then Dominic won in in Austria. And then the week later they played in Montreal. Both of them lost, I think, first or second round. Kyrgios for sure the first round. Kyrgios for sure. I think Dominic he, he won two matches if I'm not mistaken. Then he lost. Uh, pretty convincingly in the quarterfinal against Daniel Medvedev. So uh, the consistency, the uh, sport is all is all about consistency, my friends. And who is the best of doing and showing consistency? Of course, Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal. So it is not easy to predict uh, tennis tournaments outside outside Grand Slams because players are not consistent. They are not consistent, so I'm giving my my, my number five spot to Dominic Team, but he can he can lose early. I would not be shocked at all if he loses already the second or third round. I would not be shocked. But all right, I'm giving him my number five spot. That is my feeling. I think that he he deserves that after all. But I I would not be shocked if he if he somehow lost the second or third round. All right, my number fourth place. Uh, uh, which player will, will, will I give him my number fourth place? Yeah. It is not easy, guys, to, to, to choose, but uh, my number fourth place, I will give it to Tsitsipas. I will give it to Tutti Pass, my friends. Uh, I am not super impressed from Tutti from Tutti Pass consistency level of the last couple of weeks and the last couple of weeks. He is not consistent. He is talented. He has great skills. He has great hands. He has great touch. You name it. But the consistency, like it is the case with Kyrgios, Team. 
Felix Aliasime, you name it basically. They all can play tennis, they all can serve, they all can play forehands and backhands and, and run from the baseline right and left and, and defend and get offensive. And, but the consistency level is not there. And Tsitsipas has not been super amazing. I don't know, guys. For three, four months now. Since basically since that Madrid finally lost to Djokovic. So since then Tsitsipas has been pretty weak in my opinion. But and I do do I feel super confident to have Titi to, to have uh, you know what? I'm gonna change my mind. I will not have Titi Pass on my first on my on my number fourth place. What I am thinking? No, I will not have him. You know what? He is not consistent enough. I forgot a player who will play final about a couple of a couple of hours from now in in Montreal. I will have Daniel Medvedev on my on my number fourth place. Why not? He is the most consistent tennis player outside the big three at the moment. He really is. He doesn't lose many tennis matches. And when he loses, he, he loses to great players. He will lose probably against Nadal in the final later tonight. He lost to Kyrgios in Washington in the final. And Kyrgios did a, Kyrgios did a hell of a match in that final. I saw that match. Kyrgios just took, uh, took, Daniel Medved, took the racket outside from Daniel Medvedev's hands. Because we, we know that Kyrgios can do that. With that huge forehand, with that huge, for, uh, huge serve, with, with his variation with his slices with his drop shots with his thinner thinner from behind the legs you name it and Kyrgios did a hell of a match in that Washington final and he won that 7-6 7-6 if I'm not mistaken in two tie breaks so what I want to say is that Daniel Medvedev doesn't lose to to anybody to losers like Tsitsipas and team sometimes do. Daniel Medvedev is not doing that, at least not the last couple of months he has not done that. So, I will have Daniel Medvedev on my number fourth place and not Tsitsipas. Not. Team fifth, Daniel Medvedev as my, as my number fourth favorite in Cincinnati. Number, my number third favorite, I will have a Rafael Nadal. A Rafael Nadal, I don't have him higher than this. No, if Rafa plays, I'm not sure that Rafa will play. I have a feeling that if Rafa wins tonight, which I think he will, he will, he will, he will not play Cincinnati. That is my feeling. I don't know. He 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 would he would be crazy. He is the player from the big three who has had most injuries. He has had most, much more injuries than Federer, and he has had much more injuries than Djokovic, and Rafa to play both Montreal and Cincinnati, and then two weeks, ten days later. Or one week, or one week later, U.S. Open. That will be crazy decision. That will be crazy in my mind. That will be great because U.S. Open must be Rafa's high prior priority, and not Cincinnati or Montreal for that matter. So I am, I am really doubtful that Rafa will play Cincinnati. But maybe he will. Who knows? Anyway, I, I have Rafa as my number. Third favorite. I will. I don't have Rafa higher than this. Rafa will not beat Djokovic or Nada or Federer in Cincinnati. Rafa is on the other side of the draw. He can face Djokovic or Federer only in a final because Djokovic and Federer are in are in uh, same side of the of the of the draw in Cincinnati. So Rafa is my number third favorite in Cincinnati. My number second favorite. I will have, you know what, guys? It has been very hard for me to choose this one. Who will I have number one and number two? Who will I have? Djokovic or Federer? Djokovic or Federer? It, be, it has been for me the entire week. Just I have just been so, so not sure who I will have. Because in one way, I think Djokovic is a, is a better tennis player than Roger Federer this year. He is. Just look at the tournament that Djokovic has won. He has won three tournaments, and all of three, all of all the three of them are big ones: two Grand Slams and one Masters. Federer has won three tournaments as well, but two of them are 500 class tournaments, and and one is a Master. 
uh, and uh, and Feder always give Djokovic. Djokovic doesn't beat Federer easily, so Federer gives Djokovic a run for his money. We saw that in Wimbledon when Federer had two championship points, and which Federer couldn't unfortunately convert. Uh, we saw that in Paris last year, uh, in that most in that most semi-final when Feder took Djokovic to two to three set battle and when Djokovic won that third set in Paris semi-finals 7-6 in that tie break so and now it is a Cincinnati this is one of the fastest surfaces that we have in tennis like I said together with Shanghai and Australian Open uh, and Federer has won this tournament seven times this is Federer's by far the most successful masters thousands tournament that he had that he has had in, in his career he has won it seven times uh, and he has played eight finals before if I'm not mistaken eight or nine I don't know something like that but he, I know that he has won it seven times at least and and he played final last year against Djokovic which Federer lost Djokovic won last year and defeated Federer and Federer and Djokovic has won this tournament only one time which he did last year so Djokovic is the defending champion here so <sighs> I have been not sure who I will pick. Federer, Djokovic, Federer, Djokovic. Who will be my number one favorite? Who will be number? Who will be my number one favorite? And it has been a difficult decision to, for me. You know what? For one, for one period, for one time, I said I'm going to say I'm going to say Federer. I'm going to say Federer. Fe I'm going to say Federer will win this. I'm going to say Federer will win this because Djokovic, he, he has lost a, a, a lot of matches this year in the Masters. Uh, we all know that Djokovic is not as hard to defeat in Masters like he's in Grand Slams. We all know that, guys. Just just look at this. Uh, just look at the stats. He he has lost in Monte Carlo. He has lost in Rome. He has lost in Indian Wells, Miami. You name it. But when it comes to the Slams, he has won two out of three Slams this year. Two out of three. So Djokovic is a very very beatable player outside Grand Slams because Djokovic he he. I am not saying that Djokovic want to lose. He will never forget that. It is Djokovic. No, but, no, this big three, they never want to lose. They always want to win. But I think that Djokovic, back on his mind, he is, he is as most motivated. He, his big desire, his big motivation, his big goal, he is to win those Grand Slams, is to break Federer's Grand Slam record, is to be the most successful Grand Slam leader of, of all time so uh, and and that this is one reason why Djokovic is much easier to, to defeat outside Grand Slams so but it is still Djokovic it is the superior world number one so I will have Djokovic as my number one favorite Federer is my number second favorite. I will have Federer as my number second favorite. They can, they can face each other in the semifinals. And I will not be surprised at all if Federer defeats Djokovic in that semifinal. But I, I just feel that uh, Federer, he is, number, he is not my number second favorite in, in Cincinnati. I just, I, I, I don't know, man. I am just not feeling super confident to have Federer. I just, I have not seen, you know what? I am super confident in Federer against any player. Against now nowadays, as a Federer fan, I am even confident. I am even optimistic when Federer faces Nadal. Nadal used to be Federer's big kryptonite back in the days, but that's not that's not the case anymore. Like you all guys know, Federer has won six the six the last six matches out of seven en encounters with Rafa Nadal. The last time Rafa Nadal defeated Federer outside French Open was in 2014 Australian Open, my friend. 2014 Australian Open. It, it, it is five years ago. So, uh, but uh, Djokovic is another story. Djokovic is, even though the matches are close between Djokovic and Federer, Federer, he, he, he has troubles against Djokovic. Especially when it comes to big, tight, uh, huge points. Federer is he's getting tight. He's getting nervous. And the last time we saw Federer getting tight and getting nervous, we saw it in, our, in that Wimbledon final. Don't come with me that Federer played amazing, good, and if Federer pushed Djokovic. I know that. I know that. He pushed him. But when it mattered the most, Federer didn't do the job. He hit those two forehands in those two championship points very, very carefully. Both of those two forehands. He hit them with with a high of nerves. 
and that is what uh, Djokovic is in Federer's head. That is no doubt about that. Djokovic is in Federer's head. And Federer to defeat Djokovic, it, it is only in one way. <coughs> in straight sets. In straight sets, in, uh, in three sets matches, and in, in five set matches in Grand Slams, in, in four sets. If the matches get 1-1 in three sets matches, and 2-2 in five sets matches, it is always advantage Djokovic. So my, my conclusion is that I will have Federer as my number second favorite, and my number one favorite, I will have Djokovic. I think that Djokovic, he is, he is hungry. He has not played tennis for six, seven weeks now. Uh, and I think he wants to prove to anyone that he can, he can win Masters as well. And not only Grand Slams. And he did that in Madrid when he won a couple of months ago, when he won the Madrid title uh, this year. So And, and Djokovic has won 33 Masters titles, 33 Masters, 33 Masters, 33 Masters title, if I'm not mistaken. So... He's the second best in the world in in the history. Nadal is the number one in, in history with with thirty four, and Federer I think he has twenty eight if I'm not mistaken. So, I my conclusion is that I will have Federer even though it 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 is it has not been an easy decision for me. I will have Federer as, as my number second favorite in Cincinnati, and I will have Novak Djokovic as my, my number one favorite in Cincinnati. I think that Djokovic. I will not be surprised if Djokovic didn't win it. I will not be surprised at all. Uh, but I will give him my number one spot. So, uh, team, my, my fifth, Damian Medvedev, my fourth, Nadal, my third, if Nadal plays, that, that is a question mark there. I'm not sure that Nadal will play. I really am not sure. But if he plays, my number third in Cincinnati, my number second, Roger Federer, and my number one, it is Novak Djokovic. Dark Horses, ah, what can we say? <clears throat> a player like um, Stan Wawrinka is always a dark horse. A player like Nick Kyrgios, if he plays, I don't know if he plays. I think he does. It, it, he's always dangerous. We all know that Nick Kyrgios is a very, very unpredictable tennis player. When he's in a good mood, he can, he can beat everyone in the world. We all know that. But when he's in a bad mood, he can lose to anyone in the world as well. So, Stan Wawrinka... Uh, Nick Kyrgios, Dark Horse, and why not a player like Felix Aliassim? He can be a dangerous player as well, even though I am not impressed with his consistency. He's too up and down. He has huge potential, like we all know, but he's too up and down. He's too inconsistent. He's young. He's always he's, uh, he's, he's, uh, all, only 19 years old, so he has time to, to be consistent in the future. And I think he will only get better, but for the moment he's not consistent enough, so I don't think that... Felix Eliassim will win the tournament, absolutely not, but he can win one or two matches. So, my three dark horses is Vavrinka, Kyrgios, and, uh, and uh, Felix Eliassim. And a, 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 a big player like Andy Murray, I'm very glad for him and for his, for his sake. He, will, he is doing comeback on the single tournament since that Arsenal Open uh, tournament he, he played la, uh, in, back in January, so he has not played single matches since then. So, He's doing a comeback, so I want that. That is great news for for him, for us tennis lovers, and and and. But will he do big damage in Cincinnati? I don't think so. I really don't think so. Maybe he can win one match, maybe one, maybe even two. But I will be deadly surprised if Andy Murray wins more than two matches. I will be deadly surprised. My feeling is that more more is is that Andy Murray will lose his first or second match. I don't think that he will win two tennis matches in Cincinnati. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.